Hi, everyone. My name is Mitra Kleinberg, and I'm with IMA Global. Thank you for joining us live. We are pleased to be here today with Brian Connor. He's a CMA, CPA, and MBA who has spent over 30 years working in accounting and finance. Let's give a little background on him, and then we'll get into an interview. Brian took the CMA exam three years after he graduated Cal State University at Bakersfield. I was working at Bolt House Farms, one of the largest carrot growers and distributors in the U.S. Brian quickly ascended the ladder at Bolt House Farms, moving from clerk to financial planning and analysis manager. Using the skills he learned in the CMA program, Brian expanded his scope of responsibilities, which ultimately gave him the ability to move on to roles involving large scale uh, technology transformation initiatives at two nonprofits and an educational software developer. Brian later moved on to senior roles at another food manufacturer and distributor, as well as an automotive dealership. Today, Brian works as a CFO at Bullhouse Properties, a property developer in the Bakersfield area. The diverse industries Brian has worked in and his promotion to senior roles underscores the value of the CMA, which has literally been career changing for Brian. Today, Brian tries to give back to his community and to IMA through his work with students and the larger IMA organization. So thank you, Brian, for being here. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you. Yeah, we look forward to getting to know you a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks so much. Really appreciate the invitation. Of course. You know, as you mentioned, um, I'm the CFO of Bolt House Properties, which is a, a family office. And um, so some of you might be familiar with Bolt House Farms that you mentioned. Obviously, there's the carrots that you've probably seen in the stores, Mitra. Um, I think you've seen the juices as well, the smoothies. Maybe I love the smoothies. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got some in the refrigerator right now. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, I worked um, there for about 12 years. And um, so, but before uh -oh. the company was sold in 2005, um, I was, uh, you know, the land was spun off to Bolt House Properties. And um, so Bolt House Properties, like I said, is a family office. We deal with land investment, um, land development, uh, ag, solar. Um, and we actually even have an SEC registered inv investment firm in-house that manages the wealth for the Bolt House family, as well as some other clients. So we're involved in a lot of different lines of business and um, really include in our real estate portfolio. Um, it's pretty exciting that we have a master plan development um, that is over a thousand acres. And so really kind of the future growth path of the city of Bakersfield, which is the eighth largest city in California, really a lot of that growth goes through our, our property. And so it's kind of a unique opportunity to kind of really influence how the city is going to look. Um, and so, you know, it's going to provide thousands of homes, dozens of businesses, restaurants, um, lakes, parks, <laughs> trail systems and the like. So it's really exciting. So um, there's a lot going on really to all kind of work to support our vision of live, live work, and play. So, so it's exciting. That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. that's really great. <clears throat> and uh, I I have some family in Bakersfield, so kind of a personal connection there. So oh, great. Awesome. exciting to hear. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, grown absolutely. so quickly over the years. So it really is. Very cool. Well, you know, as I mentioned, um, you pursued the CMA certification early on in your career. Yeah. So um, I know our audience would love to learn, you know, why did you even pursue it in the first place? So, you know, my earliest memories of getting exposed to the CMA was back at Cal State Bakersfield. Um, there were a couple of professors that were um, involved. And so they were really pretty good cheerleaders for the certification and for the IMA. And even though at the time I was kind of thinking, I think a lot of a lot of students at the time that I was going to go the CPA path in public accounting, but um, they did a really good job in promoting, especially this annual student night um, that the IMA would put on, and the local chapter was it was pretty active at the time, and so I went to a couple of those, and so that was kind of really my early exposure. I actually signed up um, to be a, a member in the IMA at that time. But really hadn't, you know, kind of really focused on taking the CMA until kind of later on, like you said, you know, once I got in the work world and really started to find out, like, since I started in private industry, you know, and instead of public accounting, you know, it's funny, I look back and I think of some of the terms that you were used, and I was like, 
what are they saying? What does these things mean? You know, like PO, like what is the PO? <laughs> you know, the purchase order. Okay, okay. So I think it became more apparent. I, I became more familiar with the CMA, you know, through the involvement with the IMA. And so kind of that, you know, that led up, you know, to, so that was kind of my early exposure and kind of how that led up to kind of looking into taking the test. That's great. Uh, so you had the exposure from your professors from yeah. local IMA chapter, um, but what motivated you to actually enroll in the CMA program, start studying, and and what did you yeah. hope to achieve? Yeah, you know, I really wanted to, you know, I was one just passionate about the subject, and I really wanted to kind of deepen my understanding. Um, I think, you know, my thought was hey, you know what, there's some things in school that I probably need a refresher on. There's probably some things I never really quite understood. Um, and so kind of deepen my understanding, you know, learn some things that maybe weren't covered in school. Um, but also, you know, I had even, you know, probably back in high school, um, I'm one of those kids, you know, where I just, I kind of had this, I knew I wanted to go into accounting. And kind of had this long-term goal, even with, I think, the, the, the CPA idea at the time, um, going into public accounting, but I wanted to be, become a CFO eventually. And so I knew that taking the CMA, learning those skills, getting that certification, kind of that badge, so to speak, would really help in kind of that long-term path of, of getting there. And so, um, yeah, I knew that the CMA would kind of equip me and, you know, refresh that learning. and. And it's really kind of, it was really unique timing because I had two, three years, I had three years of work experience. And so as my career was starting to take off, I was starting to, you know, take on more and more assignments at work. And so it really kind of provided that, that jet feel really, so to speak, to kind of propel me um, to where, you know, it was like, as I was studying, I was literally like, you know, I go to work and I'm like, oh yeah, I could see like, you know, even though I wasn't involved in a whole lot of things yet, I, I was getting some exposure. I could see how like, okay, if I eventually get into this, whether it be grower accounting or financial statement analysis, whatever it may be, I can really kind of see how. So it really kind of helped really propel my, my career and prepared me to take on those additional assignments, those next few years, especially. That's great. And that's what I hear a lot about folks who pursue it early on. Perhaps they're not dealing directly with what they're studying about, um, but you see the practicality, you see the relevance, yeah. the terms are familiar. Um, yeah. And also it just builds that confidence, you know, where you feel mm -hmm. like, okay, if, if I'm asked to step into this meeting, uh, you know, with decision makers, with senior leadership, I have yeah. that confidence now. Yeah, so absolutely. that's yeah, great. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so when you earned your CMA, like what actually changed in your career? Did you notice a difference? early on or so um like I said I think in terms of like you know so just to provide context when I was taking the the CMA you know my path is a bit unique I'll, um like you said starting on off in as a payroll clerk out of school is a, is a little unique as, as it is because I think you know it seems like in school they're trying to prepare you for kind of this maybe even kind of pseudo controller level role you know higher level skills and so with me starting off as a payroll clerk, my father-in-law worked there and he said, hey, you know, I know this is made exactly be what you want to do, but it's a great company and you can, you know, grow with them. And so, you know, here I was. So I was, um, you know, 97, 98, I was there three, four years. So passed the exam. And right around that time, I started because I left payroll about 95 so the next few years I was out in accounting and I was covering for different people while they were sick or on vacation or even helping them. So it was an opportunity for me to learn accounts payable, accounts receivable, freight and brokerage, invoicing, cash receipts, you know, fixed assets, you know, kind of all the basic clerical functions. And so the CMA was just right there kind of helping me learn and learn, you know, as, as the, the time went on. And even though I'll be honest at times, it was a little bit frustrating, you know, because it's like, you know, you can't help but like, especially when you're young, you're comparing yourself to your peers and it's like, well, gee, they're already supervisor level or manager level, or they're doing this higher level work. But I think, you know, having the perspective now, and I think I had a little bit at that time 
with the CMA kind of providing that foundation, you know, it was a way for me to grow that strong foundation, which really, I mean, I, I think as I got into more of the kind of system implementation a few years later, you know, and where you're dealing with all sorts of systems, and I got out outside of the accounting area, you know, with receiving and inventory and, um, you know, purchasing those kind of areas um, really kind of kicked in at that point as well. So, you know, while it might not reflected itself in terms of job title or necessary quote unquote promotion right away, one of those things is because people never left there. It was a great place to work. And so there's only so many opportunities as it was. Mm -hmm. um, but it really still it had that st slow, steady kind of plotting way of building the foundation more and more and more and more. I was able to utilize the skills and get into statement analysis and preparation and investment analysis and those kind of things. <clears throat> That's great. And, yeah. you know, I think it's good that, you know, to for audience to see that there's not one traditional route that you have right. to take, you know, um, you and look at you now, your CFO, right? So yeah. you had you had that vision, you know what you wanted, and and you eventually made your way there. So yeah, um, exactly. and and you learned along the way with all the different positions you had, which yeah. is a segue into my next question. Um, you know, your career has spanned many industries, from nonprofits to automotive sales. How do the competencies of the CMA relate to so many diverse accounting and finance roles? Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, there. I've definitely been involved in a lot of different industries, and they're certainly unique in different ways. But I think from an accounting finance standpoint, a lot of them are, are answering, trying to answer similar questions. You know, what are the numbers trying to tell me? What's the story here? Are we going to, are we running into trouble that we don't see? Um, you know, establishing order out of chaos, you know, that's kind of, of what we do, you know, at a high level. And so, those needs are common throughout industries, you know, where you come in and, you know, oftentimes, you know, a major initiative would be financial planning, finance, you know, budgeting, forecasting, um, you know, improving that and really, you know, utilizing the skills, you know, to really kind of improve that. Um, so, so there's some common threads Throughout, um, you know, I've I've looked back on kind of what I do day to day in my job currently, you know, and there's certainly some. It's interesting. I can find so many connections even now to a lot of the subject areas on the CMA, you know, um, even like things like you know looking at um, unique costing methodologies with master plan developments. Um, we do a lot of investment decision analysis, you know, for example, when we get um, a letter of intent from a, from a tenant, let's say for one of our retail centers, um, they want to come in and you know, maybe it's a restaurant or forest or whatever it may be, and we'll do an investment decision analysis. So we're using those tools of internal rate of return at present value um, in order to evaluate those deals. And so, you know, to this day, I mean, still using it. And in every CFO position I've held, I've been responsible for risk management as well. Um, so, you know, the topic of, of internal control is, is huge and those risk principles, and especially, you know, right now where things are kind of, everyone's a little bit jittery and, you know, this, the ability to do uh, run scenarios and, and um, really kind of put on your risk hat and look at the future and whether it be, you know, obviously the interest rates and inflation, but other things as well. And so, yeah, so, I mean, there, there's a lot of, a lot of common threads um, that you see through these. And so I think, you know, there was even one year after um, I left Bolthouse Farms and we lived in Colorado for a year. Um, and it was actually interesting. Like I, I was in the accounting department, but um, I actually had a, it was kind of an IT liaison role, IT and information technology to where I was helping run the financial systems because they were similar to what I implemented at, at Bolthouse Farms. And even then, you know, some of the topics covering um, like different IT concepts uh, and the like, you know, were, were helpful there as well. That's great. And, you know, everything you just mentioned really relates to the CMA exam, you know, a lot of right. the internal controls, yeah. the risk management, um, yeah. So I like that you you put them in practical terms, and 
I love that you you mentioned early on what, what do management accounts do, right? They they really do make order out of chaos. So I, yeah. I love that line. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's important to to know mention like you know I haven't mentioned much, but the IMA chapter and the and the resources that the IMA provides, you know, even with the the career driver or other things, um, you know, it helped me network and get to know a group of professionals early on in my career that were seasoned, very friendly, very willing to help out. I mean, I can think of the names right now and and just really solid, great people um, that kind of helped me through that. So, it, you know, it's, it's kind of that dual package. Yeah, it's important to have that network. You know, you can lean on each other or when you're um, you know, just picking each other's brains, even when it comes to yeah. work-related subjects. So, yeah, um, absolutely. yeah I, I definitely encourage folks to join their local IMA chapter, create that network. It's so important. Um, we got a question that I think it relates yeah. to what you just talked about. So let's segue there. Um, yeah, Troy, Troy asked, hi, Brian, how can the CMA impact strategy in an organization? Can you elaborate? Well, so, you know, the, the CMA covers, um, different strategic concepts and, and the ability to do different strategic planning. You know, there's different ways of doing it out there. Um, there's some there's some great books, but in terms of the, the CMAKES, you know, especially, specifically, um, I know they touch on strategic and tactical planning. Um, you know, like I mentioned, you know, for us, we're trying to, let's say, let take one of our retail centers or the master plan development, and we're trying to figure out the highest and best use of our property, for example. And so how do you do that? Well, it's through strategic planning and using these concepts of, you know, investment decision analysis, you know, what's gonna provide you the highest internal rate return, the highest IRR overall, or the highest MPV, um, looking at different ways of, because I mean, you could take this nine acres over here and maybe it's going to be, you know, or 20 acres and it's going to be multifamily or, you know, it's just kind of a, a fresh blank slate, right? And so, you know, I think it's um, part one that they focus on a lot of that kind of um, dissident analysis, um, corporate finance type things. And and so for us, I mean, that's what we're using a lot. You know, um, solar has been a big deal for us lately. And so, you know, doing um, a lot of analysis of comparing to the rent that we receive on ag, you know, and what's going to be the um, the better investment long term, I guess. That's that's a really good um, Hopefully that example. Helps. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, and thanks, Troy, for asking that question. And you know, um, I, I do want to mention we we have another certification called the CSCA, which is Certified in Strategy and Competitive Analysis, yep. which um, was for, for a while now, um, only available to current CMAs, but it has opened right. up recently. Perhaps yeah. you saw the press release to other certifications that are relevant, like the CPA, for example. So yeah. that's something to look into for our audience who's really interested in that strategy and that competitive advantage. Um, yeah. It's and a they, really great program. And they really, they um, require actually, I think, um, you to read different books, um, mm -hmm. you know, some books that you know really cover like a broader base of different tool sets that you can use i mean there's all sorts out there i mean the five p's the four s's you know on swat the toes and so yeah if you really want to kind of dig into that area that is that is a great thing i i have started that <laughs> <laughs> you know i need to i need to get back into that but um yeah it's if you really want to dig in deep that's that's a great place yeah yeah definitely check it out on the ima website uh, yeah. So the next question I have for you, and I'm sure there's people here viewing live um, that are possibly about to graduate and kind of want to know, okay, what's going to give me the advantage, yeah. have me stand out when I'm, you know, looking for a job. Um, right. So what skills do you look for in potential hires? And do you seek out those who have certifications like the CMA? Yeah. So, I mean, let me kind of introduce a couple, I guess, frameworks that I use. Um, you know, one of them you, you guys might have heard of is the three C's, um, where I look for competence, chemistry, and character. Um, so competence, kind of speaking to, you know, the employee has to be competent at the job, show that he has some, you know, he or she has some foundation to work off of, right? You know, the CMA is huge, um, you know, showing that they've 
put an effort, even if they're a fresh graduate out of school, you know, showing that they've been involved in, in if there's a student IMA chapter or some other accounting uh, chapter or they're a student member of IMA, um, those things that just show that they're serious um, and that there's something that they can kind of, you know, work off of. And so, yeah, certainly CMA is huge and kind of demonstrating that, that competence. In terms of chemistry, you know, I think of more obviously you're getting along. How do you get along with the team? How are you going to fit? Um, and a lot of that has to do with really emotional intelligence. Um, I know that uh, Patrick Lencioni, he's he's a Bakersfield guy. Um, he's written a lot of different books, um, kind of a unique format. A lot of them are kind of a story format. And uh, some of them is the ideal team player. And the way he prov provides it, because kind of that second framework is hungry, humble, and smart. And so hungry being that you've got that drive, you've got that passion, you got that seriousness toward this career. Um, humble, you know, obviously that, you know, you could, it's not the lack of confidence, but that you can place your, your goals are kind of in sync with the company and not just your goals above the, the company goals, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and smart, you know, I don't think there's really any shortage of, a lot of times, you know, there's not a shortage of the technical smarts you know, it's obviously the CMA helps get that. And I think what, what he's addressing here, what I'm talking about here is more the emotional intelligence, more the kind of self-awareness, ability to manage relationships, how you come across to people, um, that kind of, you know, awareness of just, you know, how, how to interact, um, that you're just not going to sit in a corner and try to avoid people that, you, you know, it's kind of that networking piece. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's just we no, no longer, you know, can we sit and just do journal entries and, and avoid people, right? Um, we need to get out. And so even early on in your career, you know, the more you can learn that, the more that you can kind of develop that networking circle, you know, the better. Um, finally, I guess the character piece is really kind of, it's tougher, you know, to, to kind of engage in an interview. Um, I guess it kind of goes back to the networking process to me, to where, you know, just like anyone, I think if, if I know someone, I've worked with someone, then, you know, I know kind of a, their character. Um, so if I know someone, you know, if I know someone, I know someone kind of thing, right? You know, it's that connection. And so it's like, yeah, you know, this, this person's a good person or, you know, there's kind of that, um, you know, what I mean, kind of that referral, I guess, so to speak. Um, so, you know, the more you can build on your reputation of trust and respect, the more it'll, it'll spread. And, you know, I think that's one of my main success factors, obviously having, I think, you know, the skill set and being, you know, serious about it, trying to interact with people, you know, and get along well. But, you know, it's, it's that integrity piece as well, where, you know, people, um, you know, it's just, it's kind of your currency, especially as accounting and financial professionals. Um, so, I mean, it's just, it's super important. And so, I mean, assuming you can, you know, do the actual job, you know, I think, you know, possession, just going back again to that emotional intelligence is a very strong success factor in the, in the path to CFO, you know, from myself going from the payroll clerk to, to CFO, um, you know, you see that kind of that 80-20 flip where you have this 80% technical, 20% leadership skills, and you see that kind of slowly flip and get into, you know, more of the gray areas and, and managing people and you know the ability to listen have empathy communicate and have that self-awareness are really kind of that that ingredients and and really obviously just kind of wrap it up you know always treating people with respect and kindness you know because that'll come back to you whether good and bad you know especially in this town that I live in. <laughs> it's it's kind of a large small town and I'm sure it's probably the case in a lot of towns and yeah no, that, that was really great. And I, I love that you touched on that emotional intelligence piece. Yeah. Um, you know, we even have a, a course on, on that, you know, a CP course that was quite good. I took it recently. Oh, um, yeah. But, you know, like you said, there's a lot of people who are book smart out there, but then you need that emotional intelligence piece, which often comes with uh, yeah. personal experiences, you know, kind of learning yeah. and also that networking side of things, learning from others, yeah. really. Absolutely. Um, so, so with the importance of networking, which you've highlighted, mm -hmm. and, and I can't highlight enough, really, is um, I think that's a, a good way to an answer this question, which I have for you is, you know, you've attended IMA conferences. In fact, I, I remember seeing you at the one in San Diego. 
uh, yeah. which is really great. When mm -hmm. I may celebrated the hundred year anniversary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you've, of course, attended local ones and other ones as well. You've taken the IMA Continued Education course offerings. You know, you got to keep keep that CPE up, right, to maintain your certification. Right. Um, so why is it important to commit to lifelong learning when you work in the accounting and finance field? Um, and what has been the most valuable skill you have learned? You know, I think my philosophy has always been, you know, even though I think early on, and honestly, it probably started off with me just wanting to build my expertise and kind of, you know, be the go-to person for answers. I think that's developed over time to where my philosophy is more learn more to give more. Um, that it's, I think with any kind of, you know, thing in life, you know, if you're just taking, taking in, taking in, it's healthy to have an outlet. You know, you need to, you know, as you're learning, you need to be able to give. And I think, you know, I've had the fortune where I've been able to support organizations, not only as an employee, but also, you know, board member or whatever it may be, organizations that are dear to me, you know, I've, have crossed my life, either I went to school there or, or church or whatever it may be, and have the ability to kind of give back. And I think that's, that's really special, um, you know, the ability to kind of use my time, talent, and treasure, so to speak, um, to help where I'm employed, of course, but also, you know, the people I, I interact with and, and organizations that, you know, whether it be, you know, IMA or Cal State, Bakersfield, um, or, you know, other things that I'm on the board at my church. I used to be on the board at the private school I went to, um, the, uh, foster care. And so all these different things, you know, especially, you know, find something that you're really passionate about. And, you know, you can then have an outlet for all this uh, information that you, you know you have. And I think even someone fresh out of school has the ability to give. And I mean, there's a lot of need out there. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things in the community and, and businesses that, that need what we have. Um, and so, you know, it also gives you the opportunity to build relationships and friendships beyond accounting, really. Mm -hmm. um, some of my dearest friends are, I mean, I, I can think of one who's a sales and marketing professional. She runs a strategic consulting firm and, you know, we love to talk about business and we look at things very differently, but it's it's a really fun to kind of, you know, bounce things off each other. She even called me yesterday, like, I need to talk to you about some things, you know, and so, I mean, that's that's really fun, you know, and I think it just kind of equips you to be able to do that kind of thing. And, you know, I think, and speaking of networking, you know, one thing that I want to throw out that kind of, I guess, I'm passionate about and just kind of, kind of goes along with an emotional intelligence is improving your eye. And what mm -hmm. I mean by that is for those who are familiar with the DISC, D-I-S-C, it's a personality test. And there's a lot out there. Mm -hmm. um, I really like this one and you can Google it and, and be able to take, you know, different assessments out there. So a lot of the accountants become, they're more the high C, what you call the conscientious, um, you know, very detailed analytical um, whereas the high I is kind of more the, you know, the extroverted influencer, you know, um, be able to, you know, work with people and promote and, and that kind of thing. And, and it's usually kind of quite different from an accountant. But what I have found is that oftentimes, you know, it gets to a point to where for those outside of accounting, you obviously need to have answers for questions that come up but you have more impact for ex the extra time you put into it in this in this specific area where if if you flex your eye if you work on your influencing like we're talking about your emotional intelligence your networking your communication leadership skills you get a lot more bang for your buck i guess so to speak you know for the time that you put into it um, you know, people expect us to be shy, awkward, withdrawn, and, and it's not that we all are, but, um, I mean, I, I grew up very, very shy. And so, you know, I had to push myself, you know, into these areas. And so I'm not saying we change who we are, but I am <laughs> saying that, um, there are times we can flex our personality in order to grow and be better. And, you know, especially if there's desires to grow and, and, um, whether it be control, be controller or be CFO, be, you know, cons consultant, whatever it may be, you know, those skills will become more and more important. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there as something that I feel like is important. That's great. Thank you.
Um, yeah, I mean, you know, lifelong learning, giving back to your community, especially in a senior leadership role in, mm. um, in finance and accounting, you know, you should utilize your resources and, and yeah. have that, you have that influence. So why not? Right. So going, um, to, going to the conferences and chapter meetings, you know, the, those can really help. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, we only have a few more minutes. I, I do want to mention that you, you have <clears throat> dabbled in teaching uh, a university intro to managerial accounting class. Yeah. As if you had time on your hands <laughs> uh, <laughs> and have been an advocate for students who want to pursue a career in accounting and finance. So just some final words, what advice would you give to students who are considering pursuing the CMA certification? Well, you know, I mean, I recommend it to any business major, honestly. I'm recommending it to my son, Ooh. who's a physics and math major. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like, even though you may not be able to get certified, I realize that. Um, it helps to, I mean, whether it be documenting, researching, justifying, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just general skills that you're going to need. I mean, if you're going to grow any kind of management position or any kind of responsible position, I guess, you know, specific advice to students, you know, is that, I mean, you have the fortunate opportunity to take the exam while you're still in school, while things are fresh. I mean, you still have study buddies, you know, hopefully, and, you know, so, I mean, at least, you know, within a few years of graduation, while the material is still fresh, but, you know, you got the support of the professors. Um, I helped start a, a student IMA chapter at Cal State Bakersfield, and so they, they're kind of in the middle of it, you know, and so that would be my, my recommendation for them. Yeah. And, you know, for your son, technically you can be any major and still qualify as long as you have a bachelor's degree, qualify yeah. for the CMA exam. And you can even take the exam while still in school. Right. So yeah. I know a lot of uh, professors are encouraging, hey, you're already studying these topics in these classes, whether it's managerial accounting or yeah. um, financial accounting, cost accounting, et cetera. Well, it's yeah. still fresh in your mind and, and you're probably not going to be as busy right now in life. Right. you know, take advantage. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and maybe the certification, maybe he might get some management accounting skills where he can get certified eventually. But yeah, right. I mean, any people right. can take it. So yeah, it's uh, we have several questions. I know we're kind of running out of time. So I'm just going to yeah. just hit one and then and then we'll have to um, save the rest for later. Uh, okay. So hi, Brian. I know the CMA is comparable to the CPA, but how about the global strength? I know the UK has many of their own certifications. So I'm guessing they're from the UK and, and that is true. Um, but you know, maybe you can just touch on since you're also a CPA, um, how, how they're comparable and how they can build on, upon each other. How the CMA and CPA are comparable. You mm -hmm. mean? So, I mean, obviously the CPA covers, you know, US GAAP for the most part. There's a little bit of IFRS in there. Um, I think UK is on um, IFRS, as, as far as I can recall, and there was a, a, you know, a few years ago, they were looking at maybe doing a conversions back in well, 2011, 12, 13, you know, um, so, I mean, the CPA, I mean, taking the test, you know, certainly has that more kind of U.S. gap tax audit focus, even though there are some other things like, you know, there, there's some crossover between the CMA and CPA, they both cover, you know, financial accounting reporting, you know, how you present value, different things on the balance sheet, um, timing and kind of that, you know, accounting standards, I guess, counting basics that kind of can translate because those are a lot of similarities between the international standards and, and U.S. GAAP. Um, so there's some commonality there, I guess, between the two exams in terms of financial accounting and reporting. Um, I know CMA covers a little bit of tax, I believe. And then, the, of course, the CPA gets way more deep into kind of more technical tax and accounting subjects, um, which I think probably are more kind of unique to the U.S., um, mm -hmm. I believe. And so, you know, I know that there's a chartered accountant. You know, I know actually a couple of people that um, one of them lived in Scotland for a while and she got the CA um, and then she came back. Um, and she did a lot of kind of transaction advisory services, m and type, type stuff, you know. And so I think there's a lot more similarity between the CPA and the CA. Um, but the CMA is kind of that unique global certification where there's, I think, a lot more skills that are more, you know, and which is why I think we've seen a, a lot of the growth internationally because it is, you know, much more useful um, outside the U.S. 
Yeah, it is a global certification. Um, the CPA is a license tied to state generally. So right. the C that's the nice thing about the CMA is, you know, the same person taking it in Bakersfield, California could be also taking it in Amsterdam, and you know, right. um, yeah. or anywhere in the world, really. So, um, so it is a, a truly global and, and that's and we have chapters all around the world as well, the Institute of Management Accounts, IMA. So mm -hmm. check it out and perhaps you can um, network with folks in your area and kind of learn from them too on, on how they're utilizing it and how relevant it is to their area. Yeah. So awesome. Well, thank you so much, Brian. We really appreciate you giving your time for this interview. We learned a lot and we look forward to following you in the future. Oh, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. It was great. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye.